Hello everyone, Yom Tov, and welcome to your um, true crime video. Now, I do apologise for the state of me this week, but as you'll be able to tell, um, my lymphedema has really had a good hold of my face this week, and when it's like this, um, I can't bend to wash my hair or anything like that or get hot water on my face as you can see um i've been up 18 hours and yet the swelling's still quite bad um we've got to admit this time i look as if i've done a couple of rounds with a boxer but that's just how lymphedema takes me i can't put any makeup on i can't you know get my hair washed in case i get any soap in my eyes because my eyes still sore um, so please forgive my appearance, but anyway, I just wanted to talk to you tonight about the true crime that I have for you this week. And this one is a more recent, uh, crime and it happened in Toronto in Canada in December of 1999. Now, the person who was brutally murdered was a five-year-old girl called Farah Khan. And how it basically all started was a lady was taking our dog for a walk and it was in one of their sort of um, little parks, which was right up against the river uh, in Toronto. And she saw this couple and they seemed to be burying black bags uh, under rocks. And she thought at first that they might be burying drugs or something like that and she passed them <clears throat> excuse me and she heard them talking but she later said to police that she thought they may be Spanish or what have you she said they looked Spanish to her so that's what sent them out looking for Spanish looking people La Latina looking people but anyway, once they'd moved away, and when she realised they'd gone, she went to pull these rocks out of the place that she'd seen them um, being buried. And she pulled out the first bag, and as she opened it, she saw a child's hand and then an arm. And she opened up another bag and she found part of a child's thigh. Well, as you can imagine, she was literally screaming. And she ran with her dog and she ran to get the police. This was, like I say, on the 7th of December 1999. So the police turned up, they took her statement and they were sort of looking into um, people of sort of European appearance, especially particularly Spanish appearance, Latina appearance. But tips were coming in, but they weren't getting any further forward. And then the forensic um, pathologist, his findings were that of the, the parts of the body that they've been able to discover, the uh, torso was missing and the head was also missing. But they managed to find the arms and legs of this child. They were able to say that the child was between four and six years old and she was of South Asian 
um, descent. So the police put this out and asked if any children around about that age had gone missing in that part of the Toronto area. Well, it was through the quick thinking of a kindergarten teacher called Heather Cartwright who contacted the police and said that she had uh, one of the senior kindergarten children hadn't returned from um, a family who'd gone to Pakistan for a short time. And when the police turned up, um, she told them that the student she had that wasn't there was called Farah Khan. She was five years old. And what she could give them was a recent um, finger painting of the child's hand. Um, so she handed that over. They were able to actually lift a fingerprint from that painting, match it up to the fingerprints of the child, and they knew then that they had a match. So they went back and spoke to the teacher, and apparently the child's stepmother had gone to the school um, on the 2nd of December and had said that Farah wouldn't be returning to school for the time being because her husband's grandfather, I think, or grandmother, was a grandparent anyway, was taken gravely ill in Pakistan and they had to go there because they were needed. But she wouldn't say when Farah would return. So obviously the school had to allow it. Um, so that was the tip that they gave police. Police then discovered that um, the father's name was Muhammad Khan and apparently the, um, I just need to, I haven't been able to remember all of this, the major significant details. But um, the stepmother was called Kaniz Fatima. Um, he was 40 years old and she was 49. Now, when they arrested, well, when they brought them in for questioning, rather, yes, you can hear the cat talking to me again, can't you? When the police brought Mohammed Khan and Kaniz Fatima, in for questioning. At first, the story that they gave the police was that um, Mohammed Khan had he walked into the home to find um, Farah lying at the bottom of the stairs, and her throat was cut. The next story that he gave was that he admitted that he'd flown into a rage and he'd hit her. She banged her head off the coffee table and she died. And um, he didn't realise what he was going to do. So he thought the best thing to do was to get rid of the body. Then he went back and changed his mind and said that um, because she'd cut her own throat, he didn't think anybody would believe him. So he decided to cut up her body and bury her. Then he went back to the original story of he'd lost his temper with her. He'd beaten her. She banged her head off the coffee table, died, and then thought he'd better get rid of the body. So he cut her body up into various parts. Now, Kanese Fatima 
said that it was nothing to do with her. She was terrified of her husband's rages. So she tried initially intervening with him not to keep attacking the child who he, he appeared to hate because in his words she was a bastard child. He did not believe that she was the child of his and his first wife. Um, so that was that and then it appeared to police that whenever he talked about Farah, he seemed to be very hateful towards her. And he did tell them that he didn't believe that um, he was her father. But because he and his first wife had an arranged marriage, they didn't get along. Within months, they were divorced. But, you know, when the divorce happened, and then she became pregnant. He brought the child back with him from Pakistan to Canada with his new wife. And um, the, uh, the wife has no rights over the children in Pakistan. It's only the father has rights over the children. And she allowed him to take her because she honestly believed that our child would have a chance of a really good life in Canada. So that must have been very hard for her, being the child's mother, knowing it was highly unlikely she'd ever see her again. So anyway, I'm going to keep refreshing my mind with parts to this case. So anyway, we've established that her name, her age, um, she was born on the 4th of February, so that's her birthday, um, 4th of February 1994. Um, so, apparently the officers questioned Muhammad Khan and he agreed to take them to where the torso and the head was. He only managed to recover the head. He said he couldn't remember where the torso had gone. He couldn't remember. But they were able to recover her head. Um, Kanise Fatima, of course, said that she had absolutely nothing to do with it. And she was innocent of everything. And she blamed him entirely for Farah's murder. Um... So, the child's birth mother, Shahida Jabin, wanted to give Farah a burial in Canada. Muhammad Khan insisted as her father, he wanted to take her back to Pakistan to have her buried there. Well, of course, this was now impossible because he was under a charge for murder. There was no way the detectives were going to let him loose to go to Pakistan because he would disappear, they'd never find him. But um, Shahida Jabin came over to Canada. Um, the money was raised by the local Muslim community who were absolutely horrified that one of their own had been killed in such a horrific way. Um, the Imam at the mosque actually remembered Farah because she used to come to prayers with her father and her stepmother. And he remembered her as a very quiet but lovely little girl. Um, the imam was called Omar Farouk. And he said that, um, she said, he said that it's an innocent child that's part of our community that's been hurt. And we have to get involved. So they raised the money for Shahida Jabin to come over to Canada. But of course, now it was to bury a child. She was in shock. She had no idea when she was first told in Pakistan. 
She had to fly straight over and she was in a state of shock. So, the city councillor, who was called um, Khalid Usman, said that if she'd gone, if Farah and her remains had gone to Pakistan, she would never have got justice. And he was insistent on them keeping Mohammed Khan uh, within the confines of the jurisdiction of the Toronto police. So, anyway, Farah's burial went ahead and she was buried in Toronto. Um, so, anyway, it was five years before the trial got underway and that started um, in 2004. And... Um, so here's where the meat and potatoes of it all is. Apparently, according to the defence, Khan and Fatima claimed they'd come home to find that uh, Farah had cut her own throat. And they'd panicked and decided to get rid of the body. Then the story changed. That Farah was misbehaving. That Muhammad had beaten her. That it was an accident. They didn't mean to kill her. It was just, you know, it just didn't make sense. None of their stories seemed to make any sense. Um, apparently, when her body was examined, the um, forensic specialist said that the cutting of her body just wasn't haphazard. It was a precision cutting. And they did find precision tools for, well, using on meat, really, in Mohammed Khan's possession. So he already had the tools with him to do the deed. Um, there was extensive bruising all over Farah's body. Um, there was marks of slippers, ha hairbrushes and a rolling pin had been used on that little girl's body. Anyway, Mohammed Khan was found guilty of first degree murder. Fatima was found guilty of second degree murder. Um, Mohammed Khan still remains in custody, but apparently Fatima is now out on, I believe it's called Oh, day parole. I mean, it's because it's been 20, 20 years since um, little Farah was killed. And um, apparently, first degree murder in Canada is 25 years to life. And um, what Fatima got was anything between 10 to 15 years. So, but she's on day parole. But apparently the Corrections uh, Centre in Canada wouldn't give any more details apart from admitting that she was on day parole. Um, Farah is not forgotten. Omar Farouk, the Imam, still visits our grave site. And um, Khalid also still visits our grave site and they both say prayers. Whenever there's a funeral, they always go to Farah's grave site and um, they pray over the grave. She's definitely not forgotten. Our mum now, Shahida Jabeen, um, did go back to Pakistan but she was granted entry into Canada so that she could build a new life for herself there. So at least she can be near a little one and she can go and pray over her grave. Although as you can imagine, that's not what a mother wants for her child. But to have such a cruel man as her father 
to say the things about her that she, he did were unforgivable. But some people are just evil like that, aren't they? Um, so, and of course, the Toronto police, especially um, headed by um, the lead detective, was called Rolf Prizer. And he celebrates um, Farah's birthday. He said along with his own family birthdays, he never forgets hers. He says that um, that case will be imprinted on him. He said he's dealt with some cases in his time, but that case will be ever imprinted on him. That little girl left a very big um, mark on him. She really wound her way into his heart, I think. But she was a beautiful little girl. Um, when I was looking into this, and it wasn't a case that I was initially going to look into. It actually just popped up on um, some recommendations that I was initially looking at. And I just saw this. And I looked at her and I thought, I have to tell your story. And I certainly won't forget her. Now, I've told all of you about her. Um, but I'm very glad that Muhammad Khan is still in prison. And I hope he stays there until he dies. That, that I think, would be justice. You know, a life for a life. But not taking another life, because I don't know where that gets you. But he can give up his freedom for taking his own daughter's life. I just... How you could do that to such a beautiful little girl. I don't know. But maybe that's... Um, just human with a heart, just a mum who cares, but anyone who can harm a child in my book is evil, because you don't harm children. So that's what I managed to find out for you today. Um, I do hope that... Um, I never like to say I hope you've enjoyed the video, but at least you've, you may have heard of this little girl before, or you may not have. If you have, then I'm sure that you can't unknow her now, and if you haven't heard of her before, then as I didn't, I'd, I'd just say, it. well, I hope you're resting in peace. I'm sure she will be. If she'd lived, she would have been 25 now. So, I believe she would have been 25. By my reckoning, anyway. And I can't do maths for toffee. So, there you have today's true crime. Hope you liked it, the one I brought to you. If you have any other recommendations that you'd like me to look into, um, any other people that you you might want me to um, read up about and share with everyone, please do put it in the comments so that I know. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to Look for something else for your watching pleasure. Thank you again for being here. And thank you very, very much for watching. And again, I do apologise for the state of my face. But um, as you can see, you know, hopefully by next week I won't look this bad. Um, 
please like the video if you wouldn't mind because every little helps and if you are subscribed please check that you're subscribed by the way um, because I've heard an awful lot of people are complaining that they've been unsubscribed from me and then had to resubscribe and if you are subscribed please could you give that little bell a ding and then you'll get notified when my videos go up I never ask anybody to subscribe you'll be here if you want to be here you know I would never ask anyone to subscribe but if you are here and if you did like it please would you um, just hit the like button um, and if you don't like it please tell me why and then I can try and put it right or give me your suggestions or give me hints of how I can make things better I'd rather talk it through with you rather than just have a dislike okay but like I said if you like and then just ring the bell and then you'll get notified and I don't know why but I'm not getting notified of any comments being left for me so I have to keep coming back and checking so I don't know what YouTube's getting up to uh, any ooh, I haven't a clue not a two not a clue I'll see I'll get my words one of these days I will get through a video without um, mincing up, messing up my words I think anyway I love you all Please take care and stay safe. And could you send some healing eye, um, vibe, me, eyes? Send some healing vibes to my eye because it's uh, still hurting a bit. Okay. And that's for all of you. Take care. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye bye for now.